semblances. It's like your very own superpower, and everyone has one, unless you don't, and it's unique to the individual, unless it isn't. <laughs> but for real, the semblances in Ruby make the show a lot more fun and gives the fight scenes a lot more style than other shows. But not all semblances are made equal. Some are great, and some are hot garbage. <laughs> So let's have a little fun today and find out the top 10 best and the top 10 worst semblances in Ruby. Just a couple of things before we get started. First of all, I'm judging these semblances not only on their powers, but also its stylistic differences. I'm also not letting my feelings for the characters affect my rankings. Some characters I hate have some pretty great semblances, and some of my favorite characters get stuck with some trash semblances. I'm also limiting this to just what we've seen from the show itself. Any book or manga exclusives won't count. And if we don't get to see it get used in the show, it doesn't count either. Finally, just keep in mind that these are just my dumb opinions. You can disagree with everything I say, and I would love to hear your thoughts and rankings in the comment section. So let's not waste any more time. Starting this list off with the worst, we have... <laughs> Staying true to her namesake, Elm's semblance lets her root herself into place. Not a terrible semblance, it's just a little situational when it comes to being useful. The characters never seem affected by recoil with any of their weapons, and when weapons clash together, the characters are usually totally stationary then too. So Elm's semblance doesn't really seem like it's very unique, and doesn't even seem like it's worth it half the time. <laughs> The Schnees apparently have a rare hereditary semblance. It does take away from the unique nature of having your own personal semblances for each character. Regardless of that, however, the Schnees' glyphs have a ton of different abilities that are amazing to see in combat. From holding a character in place to launching them away, shooting elements out and making a speed boost, and of course the ability to summon awesome enemies from earlier in the show to give the Schnees a huge range of different abilities to choose from. The downside to the Schnees' glyphs, and the reason it's only number 10, is how un inspired their actual uses of their glyphs tend to be. After learning to summon, we only see Weiss launch elements in rare situations, and she never lets any of her teammates use her glyphs, even though she already has the biggest range with her attacks. In order to hold up a summon, you have to stay perfectly still, unless you're just riding on top of it. And we all know how time dilation has long been forgotten. A fun pool of abilities, for sure, just some boring execution. <laughs> His semblance doesn't have an official name yet, so I like to call it Bad Touch. <laughs> This is our first offender of glowy hand syndrome. The amount of boring semblances that just have the character's hand glow this shimmery effect is aggravating. Beyond the boring style of his semblance, what it actually does is sort of confusing. It seemingly instantly breaks your aura, at least for a short amount of time. Fine enough, but the problem starts to arrive when you start thinking of Tyrion's combat in hindsight. These in hindsight semblances feel like they hadn't actually given the character a semblance when they first wrote them. We didn't see Tyrion use his semblance until volume 7, and it gets me wondering why we hadn't ever seen it back in volume 4. After disarming Crow, why didn't he just reach forward and break his aura right then? A boring visual and confusing in hindsight makes this semblance a real stinker. You know what I think? I think it's to balance out all his hot air. <laughs> I'm a fan of the idea of having semblances that aren't necessarily good for combat. I also love when a character's fairy tale inspiration is hinted at with their semblance. Klein is a fun example of both of these. Representing the seven dwarves to Weiss's Snow White, Klein has apparently seven unique personalities to him. The only hint it's happening is his changing eye color, representing the different personalities when they pop up in conversation. A fun little visual and a creative concept that makes this side character a little bit more memorable than most. Raven is outfitted with a bunch of unique abilities already, but her semblance is really the worst power she has. Kindred Link allows her to create a portal that can instantly transport her to someone she has a deep connection with. A great ability for the character whose entire motivations center around running away from those she's grown close to. <laughs> Mostly just used as an excuse for her to pop in and out mysteriously in Volume 2, her semblance is never used in any interesting ways. And the portal she makes looks... Weird? Like, okay, I'm just gonna say it. It looks like a space vagina. And these are the last 60 seconds of your life. 
Again, another fun semblance that directly hints at her fairy tale inspiration. Talk can become completely invulnerable for 60 seconds, and she uses her timer to count down the minutes she has while her semblance is active. A really creative way to incorporate TikTok's ticking clock from her Peter Pan inspired fairy tale. She's only at number 8, however, because there's really only one way she can use the semblance, so there's not too many creative uses with it. Maybe it's a good thing she only lasted one scene. Another offender of the glowy hand syndrome, Ren's semblance lets him mask his emotions, and with some effort, the emotions of others around him. Pretty useful when fighting Grimm, pretty worthless when fighting any of our human enemies. Beyond the extremely limiting circumstances where his semblance would actually be beneficial, he also seems to have to remain almost entirely stationary when using it. Semblances that require a user to stop moving is incredibly boring, and hurts the flow of action. And once again, this semblance becomes eyebrow raising in hindsight. We had to wait until the end of volume 4 to finally see Ren's semblance. Why didn't he use it against the King Taijitsu, or the Deathstalker, or during the Grim Attack, or the Fall of Beacon, or against the Geist? With the latest episode of Volume 8 showing us it's been upgraded so now he can read people's true emotions, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Maybe with this new development my opinions will change, but as it is, it's still just not that interesting to me. It's disappointing for how long we had to wait to see one of our main characters' semblance for how little it can actually do. <laughs> Adam's semblance is stunning. It's been stealing the show since back in the black trailer. Stylistically, it's one of, if not the, coolest looking semblance, turning the world his signature black and red. It makes his attack feel like it hits harder than anything else we've seen. Unfortunately, with the switch to the Maya engine, we never got to see that cool style with his semblance anymore. His semblance allows him to absorb an attack's power with a weapon of choice, storing up the energy and allowing him to send it back with an extra mighty hit. Moon Slice is only number 7, not only because of the dip of the style of his semblance, but also because he never really got to play around with it. He could use his Moon Slice with any weapon or object of his choosing, and I wish we could have seen it done with something other than his sword. Disappointing, but at least what we got was amazing. So remember how I said only semblances we've seen in the show? Fox is a weird exception because I think we have seen it. It's just like it's not something we can actually see. Maybe the only thing worse than a glowy hand semblance is one that has absolutely no visual or auditory cues for the audience. Fox has telepathy, so he can talk to people inside their heads. He can also sense aura and energy, so even though he's blind, he can still locate where people and Grimm are around him. It's just an awfully boring semblance with some really weird abilities. Ignoring how convenient it is that the person who happens to be blind also happens to have a semblance that effectively lets them see, it's the telepathy part that really feels out of place. As if the writers wanted a reason for the scene where Fox looks like he's covered in velvet but he doesn't actually say anything. I don't know, I've already talked way too much over a semblance that has like four seconds of screen time. It's just boring, okay? Stay. A cute allusion to his dog fondest traits, and more importantly, a really unique semblance. Freezing someone, or with a little more energy, multiple people, so they become completely immobile. Very handy, and very cool. It's only number 6 though because he never seems to remember he actually has a semblance until the end of a fight. I would really love to see him get to play around with it a lot more. My semblance brings misfortune. Sometimes I can't keep it under control. My semblance is good fortune. Lucky you, huh? I'm lumping these two together because it really is the exact same semblance. Plot convenience. Another pair of semblances with zero visual or audio cues. The luck pair is even worse because their semblance is something completely unquantifiable. There's no real way to prove whether or not good or bad luck is real. For all we know, Crow and Clover might just be projecting their luck onto everyday situations. Which could be interesting. Crow, after being told he's a bad luck charm, finds out he just hadn't have unlocked his real semblance yet. And what he perceived as bad luck was just him creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. Unfortunately, this is never hinted at. And his bad luck is mostly just used as an excuse for plot convenient things to happen. And all the same things can be said for Clover too. We just can't really see any more of his semblance at use because... Uh. <laughs> it's just dumb all around. 
And it also makes, like, no sense with Crow's motivation or character. Yeah, my semblance is misfortune, so I should usually distance myself from my loved ones. That's why I permanently stapled myself to my niece's group adventure and stayed right by their sides this whole time. Cinder's semblance was really up for debate for quite a while. It was unsure which of her powers were because of her maiden abilities, or if it was just fire dust being used. I kinda like that. Cinder utilizes a lot of different abilities in a lot of different ways, but her semblance is the one that seems to make the most interesting combat moments. Cinder, true to her name, can superheat objects. She uses it in a way that hints to her Cinderella-themed fairy tale inspiration by superheating dirt to create glass. Combined with her maiden powers, she can basically just make a lump of rock appear and then instantly superheat it to create an infinite amount of weapons for her to use. She doesn't even need to make direct contact with something in order to heat it up. It's a semblance that really does work best in combination with all of her other skills. But it's also just a creative take on a somewhat simple concept. I love it. A good semblance can be used perfectly in tandem with a character's weapon of choice and other abilities. Hazel's actively goes against that. <laughs> he can't feel pain. So what he does is he just jams lumps of dust into his arms and then, like, elemental punches stuff. It looks super dumb, and mostly feels like an excuse to not bother giving him a real weapon. Also, just because you can't feel pain, that doesn't mean you wouldn't still be able to get hurt. You'd just be receiving the damage, but not realizing it. So in order to write themselves out of that little plot hole, the writers also gave Hazel super quick regenerating aura to make his semblance actually useful for combat. It's boring, it's ugly, and we've seen nothing creative done with it at all. Nora's electric boost is an awesome allusion to her fairy tale inspiration of Thor. She can take the energy from electricity and use it to give her a supercharged boost in abilities. Run faster, jump higher, and most importantly, hit harder. It was definitely worth the three year long wait to see her semblance on full display. And fortunately, every time we've seen her use it, it's just gotten cooler and cooler. We've also played around with how Nora gets to use the electric shock to power her up. The most creative instance being when Ruby shot Nora with an electric bullet to give her the edge over Tyrion. I've never been disappointed with Nora's semblance, and I can't wait to see more of those pink sparks fly. You're telling the truth. Handy semblance. Like I said, I enjoy semblances that aren't necessarily useful for combat, but Robin's semblance is so situational and boring. And it really feels like it was only written as a plot convenience. Oh, and another point to the glowy hand syndrome. When you grab her hand and say something, her hand will glow green if you're telling the truth. This semblance literally seems to just exist to have people believe Ironwood at the end of Volume 7. And despite her semblance being so situational, she seems to constantly insist on asking people to grab her hand to prove if they're lying or not. It's so boring and so contrived. And now Ren's semblance can basically do the same thing, only it looks way cooler when he does it. What a joke. Emerald has, hands down, one of the most powerful semblances in the show. The ability to make someone see a hallucination or whatever she wants them to see. And Emerald has used the semblance in some really creative ways. From making Coco think Yatsuhashi was still in the tournament, to hiding her teammates to get a jump on Amber. To making Pyrrha overexert her semblance in a way that led to Penny's death. The only downside to her hallucinations is that she seems to have to stay relatively stationary while she's doing it. She also tires out easily when she over relies on it, usually when affecting several people at once. The other downside is it's limited by her, and by extension, the writers' imaginations. And in recent years, she hasn't been very creative with her semblance, especially in the middle of combat. Which is why it's only number three on my list. A super creative semblance with tons of potential, and it makes me excited to see even more of it. What is your semblance? Reflexes. Once again, we have a semblance with no visual or audio cues, only this time her semblance is something that doesn't even seem like a real semblance at all. Worst of all, it's not even Maria's fault. 
Maria's prefluxes allow her to sense and react to things around her faster than usual. Unfortunately, literally every single character already seems to have this. Characters react to attacks so fast and block and dodge them instantly. Maria's prefluxes look no different from anyone else's fighting styles. A boring concept from the get-go made even worse because of the show's lackluster choreography. Pyrrha was undoubtedly one of the strongest fighters to attend Beacon, and her extraordinarily powerful and useful semblance played no small feat in helping her achieve that status. Pyrrha had the ability to control metal with the use of magnetism. Whether it was something bombastic like launching millions of soda cans at her friends, or, more often than not, something subtle like slightly shifting an opponent's weapon to avoid being hit. Pyrrha's semblance had a ton of uses, and she expertly used it without ever over-relying on it during combat. I truly lament the fact we never got to see her use it even more in the show, and truly test the limits of her potential. But what we did see from her led to some of the most amazing, epic, and memorable moments from the show, ever. Now, before we get to my number ones, let's look at some honorable mentions. <laughs> Fiona, another offender of the glowy hand syndrome, could store away items into a pocket dimension. It's really cool, but currently is just very underutilized. I would love to see her play around with it more before putting it on my top 10. Sitting at a strong number 11, though. Jean's aura amp is a fun boosting ability for the people around him. The only problem is he needs to stop moving, seemingly, and once again, glowing hand syndrome. But a lot of fun potential with this one. Yings's burn is fun, but becomes confusing when the questionable rules of aura breaking get involved. However, she does have one of the coolest looking styles for her semblance in the whole show, even after the switch to Maya. Speaking of style, Neon's rainbow propulsion is a cute nod to her inspiration of Nyan Cat. It's just pretty limiting with how it can be used. And Velvet's photographic memory made her able to use hard light recreations of her friends' as weapons and mimic their style exactly. Definitely fun for the one fight it was shown off, but I wish we got to play around with it more in the show. <laughs> Vines' aura vine is fine enough. Personally though, I just think it's super ugly. Like, it just looks goofy as hell. <laughs> Maze's invisibility is pretty limited and doesn't have a whole lot of potential. And once again, glowy hands. Glinda's telekinesis is pretty basic, but more just becomes confusing after episode one. Like, she never has this glyph ever again. Is there more to her semblance or was that just dust or something? Blake, Sun, and Flint all have clone semblances. Of the three, Flint's clones are the most visually appealing, but ultimately none of them have ever used their clones for anything that creative during combat. For Sun, they've been most useful for non-combat moments at least, but Blake's shadow clones have never impressed me. And lastly, Ruby, Harriet, and Ublek have speed semblances, and they're all pretty bland, which is a shame because super speed is like my favorite superpower. I guess that's why it's so disappointing how little any of their characters actually play around with this concept. Come on guys, you both have super speed, pick up the pace! Other than having some stylistic flair, these three are just a disappointment. Now finally, let's see what my number one picks are. My number one worst semblance is... Martial law, have you lost your damned mind? Are you that scared of what my... <laughs> If you take all the things I hate most about the other nine semblances on this list and culminate it into one, you would have Ironwoods' paper-thin excuse for a semblance. Take the questionable circumstances of Fox's semblance, mix it with the eyebrow-raising contrivances in hindsight of Wren's semblance, add in the abstract concept of Crow and Clover semblance, then top it all off with zero visual or audio cues and you have a recipe for a semblance that might as well not exist. Metal truly feels like the writers wanted to throw a half-assed semblance onto the character, but make it so flimsy in nature that it's questionable when, or if, the semblance actually gets used. Metal gives Ironwood determination. That's... that's it. When he sets his mind on something, he gets conviction to keep at it. Fucking why? What? Determination is such an abstract concept, it's hard to judge whether any of Ironwood's actions are by his own merit, or just some invisible strings puppeteering him into doing things a certain way. Worst of all, it completely muddies Ironwood's character and lessens the impact of his development. His semblance is actively making him a less interesting character, where before Ironwood was developing in an interesting way that made his actions unpredictable. A combination of his own fears and paranoia colliding with his PTSD 
PTSD over his previous loss, watching everything he had done and built to stop Salem's forces become seemingly easily hacked and turned against him. All of that clearly did a number on his mental health. And then, with Salem's return in Volume 7, only further proving his defenses as worthless, no wonder he's making some questionable calls. Ordering martial law, finding it harder to trust those around him, making desperate, rash decisions like shooting Oscar. All of this that could make him develop in an interesting ways. Whoops, it's all gone. It's all just his dumb semblance telling him to make bad decisions. Oh, why is Ironwood doing something dumb? Because his semblance is making him hyper-focused on doing the dumb thing. Metal is boring. Half-assed concept that is non-existent at best and ruins his character at worst. I don't understand why they didn't just say he never unlocked his semblance. That's what they usually do for 99% of their other characters. It's not just boring. It's not just annoying. It's not just pointless. It's bad. It was Oz's plan in a former life, but he didn't take it far enough. This might have been obvious to some of you, but really, Neo has hands down the most creative, fun, and entertaining semblance the show has had yet. Neo's shape-shifting abilities gets used in the most unique ways. Neo can alter her appearance, whether that involves disguising herself or making it look like she's disappeared is where the real fun begins. On top of that, the stylistic visuals of having her semblance look like shattering glass really gives her powers an extra punch of creativity. Whenever we're left with just glass shards where her body seemingly once was, it sends a surprising little jolt through me, startled by her facade just like her opponents. And the shimmering glass effect looks cool not only with its shift to Maya, but I actually think it looks way better now. Her deceptive shattering was used in all the most creative ways possible, and has led to some amazing combative transitions and dodges. However, her semblance also lets her change her appearance. Apart from being a convenient excuse to give her longer hair and an upgraded outfit, it plays perfectly into her espionage-styled skill set, literally slipping right underneath our heroes' noses, or even worse, tricking our heroes by disguising herself as their friend and catching them off guard. Beyond her uses of her semblance in combat, even more creatively, she gets to use it outside of fights too. It's so creative how Neo can use her semblance to help her get her meaning across. Since she's mute, she can't just tell people what she means, but she uses her semblance in unique ways to still get her point across to others. Literally everything about overactive imagination is creative and fun, both in and out of combat. Neo's semblance is on full display and actively improves her character with its unique, different possibilities of how she can use it. I can't wait to see her semblance get used more in the future, because with its impressive track record so far, I'm 100% sure I won't be disappointed. Good job. Thank you so much for watching this video. This was a powerhouse to get through. A uh, quick shout out to my $10 patrons. You're all amazing. Nako, Michael, James Dodds, Cool Duck, Andrew, Ramiel, Valhalla Knight, Chamomile, G Extreme, Dakota D, and Classy Critic. You're all amazing. Thank you all so much. Thank you for watching this video. This was a big one and I had a lot of fun coming up with my lists. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. What, what, who, what are your top 10 best and top 10 worst? Who's your favorite? Do you agree or disagree with anything I said? There's a lot going on here. Put them down in the comments below. I love seeing your comments and I really want to see them for this one. Uh, yeah, I hope you like this and I hope you'll join me for the next one. Bye-bye.